D-Day approaches for Russ Grease and his Honda Hobble because the Z-Cumbent is very close to completion. Stay tuned. Hello everyone, welcome to Zero Labs. I'm Mark Brash, your host. Today is Saturday, June 14th, 2014, and this is, uh, this is what's going to leave Russ's Honda Hobble in the dust. Now, uh, I, I confess, I have been watching some of his videos, and uh, he has souped up that little uh, Honda Hobbit quite well. It sounds a little bit more like a motocross bike these days, but uh, I still don't think it's going to be any match for an electric-powered recumbent hybrid bicycle. So let's take a brief tour of the Zcumbent bike and let's see what Russ's Honda Hobbit is up against. Okay, so we'll start at the front of the bike. You can see I've got the, uh, the brake calipers in place. On this side, I have a piece of aluminum angle stock that I've attached the steering knuckle to, and the, uh, the steering rod goes back to the handlebars. It's just attached to the back of the fork with a couple of screws on both sides of the fork. All right. I have the pedestal mounted for the front derailleur mechanism. I've got all my batteries mounted in the tray. Here's where the motor speed control box needs to go. Here is the steering linkage at the handlebars. And once again, looking back at the chain ring, you can see that the chain runs through the derailleur. On the left handlebar is my control for the front derailleur. Push it across like that and then crank and the chain comes right up on the on the large sprocket and the large chain ring. And then the chain is snaked along the frame crisscrosses and in like a bow tie fashion to my idler pulleys. The idler pulleys actually both go in the same direction but it's slightly different speeds when I'm changing gears. But the reason I have two pulleys is so that they can crisscross without rubbing against each other. Now we come back to the rear cassette and the rear derailleur. And if I change gears, it's kind of hard to do this one-handed. I should probably use my tripod. Okay, so I'm just going to go through the gears real quick for you. So this is low gear.
And on the opposite side of the wheel hub you can see the electric motor. And the motor itself is not spinning because that sprocket on the shaft is a one-way bearing so that uh, it's freewheeling in one direction and drives the tire in the other direction. The only downside to this, to this uh, setup is that there will be no regenerative braking. But this is a speed test. This is a competition. This is a one-shot deal. And uh, this is what I've got here going in this direction. You can see that the uh, the motor shaft does spin. You can see the uh, the shear pin that I've got on the shaft moving, but in this direction it doesn't. The camera mount is going to be an aluminum metal bar on the back of the headrest. It's just going to extend out like right to about here. And then uh, there will be a flat, a flat mount for the camcorder to sit looking over my shoulder going forward. And then on the front pedestal for the, uh, on the pedestal for the front derailleur, there will be a camera mount for the uh, camera looking back. And of course, let's not forget the best part of all. Hey you, get out of my way. So that's the tour. All that remains to be done before the final, uh, final testing is to attach the digital speedometer, put together some camera mounting hardware, one on the seat mounted to the headrest hardware looking over my shoulder in to the front, and one looking back at me and behind me so that we can see Russ fading away in the distance as I'm pulling away and showing him my uh, shrinking taillights. So um, that's pretty much all that's left. I do have a couple of repairs that I need to make to the motor speed control box. Uh, one of my relays failed on me, so I need to make that quick repair and then we'll be ready for some testing. That's all for now. Thank you for watching. As always, please rate, share, comment, and subscribe. And peace, everyone. Okay, so I've got the relay control box repaired and modified so that I don't end up with the failure mode that you see in this picture right here on a normally open relay that welded the normally closed contact that has no contact attached to it. Apparently the back EMF of the uh, MY1016 motor caused an arc inside the relay and literally melted the contact. So I've, I've now put some uh, capacitance across the contacts and across the motor windings. Hopefully that won't happen again. Uh, so here it is, slow speed. That's the three batteries in parallel for 12 volts. And here is high speed, the three batteries in series. Incidentally, the back tire is spinning at 807 RPM, no load. That equates to 54 or 56.4 miles per hour under a no load condition. Under a load condition, I'm still estimating 49 miles an hour. Be afraid, Russ. Be very, very afraid. <laughs>